Hello, everyone, and this is Whale FM Community Spotlight. Whale is home to one of the absolute most robust collections of artists, builders, collectors, and enthusiasts, all under one oceanic roof. Join us as we look to highlight some of the projects being built and worked on by a diverse and potent creative community. First up, Simple Pixel Life, who will be presenting C. Terroy Punks. Simple, how are you today? I'm great. How are you, Nightmare? I'm awesome. Thank you. Uh, full disclosure, I, I've already told the group that will be presenting today, there's some tree work being done by my house, so we may hear chainsaws in the background, um, but in theme for Halloween, I suppose, so couldn't pick a better time to have that type of uh, background noise. But to try to mitigate it, I am going old school hip hop in my bedroom style with a comforter over my head and the computer. So hopefully it helps to buffer some of that. So if you do hear the chainsaw noise, that's what it is. It's not dramatic effect for what the people are presenting here. Okay. So Pixel, really quick, tell us a little bit about yourself and your background. Yeah, sure. Hello again. Hello, well community. This is my real name is Kerem, aka Simple Pixel Life, and we can stick with that as we are all know with our nicknames in this world. Actually, I'm 40 years old, a father, have a cute daughter, need nearly five years old, who loves, by the way, to participate with kids. Uh, she really loves the feedback for her paintings in here. Uh, I love video games, a gamer for like, let's say, 30 years, love first person shooters. I'm a butterfly guy mostly and working as a marketing manager for a company export department. This is my day job. And of course, I have this passion for NFT world. Uh, this is my day and night, let's say, job or hobby. Uh, for this NFT life, I'm trying to read, learn and execute. And of course, then read more to understand more. Because as you know, we wake up every morning to something different. So I guess that's it. This is basically me. Right. And I've seen that you've posted pictures of yourself all around the world. I guess, uh, you know, your your job has you traveling different places. So always yeah. cool to see your perspective in the community. Can you touch on a little bit on your experience with Whale? Of, of, of course. Uh, actually, Adidas, you know, Adidas, he invited me in here. He was my first collector, actually, for my very first Pixel collection. I got also this 1,000 famous Pixel people collection. We were talking on Twitter. He talked me a lot, by the way, uh, and told me to join Whale. And since then, I guess I'm obsessed with Whales because, I mean, when we think about it, there is no other place like Whale as far as I know, and I can tell you, uh, we shouldn't call whale as a community because for me it's more than that far more than that when we look around there are events like these interviews games information about all around the world and they are not stopping so you the team is actually doing this and i want i want to talk thank to you really and of course there is world we can skip whale without mentioning the world i guess uh, whale has a vision and I can feel that I can really feel that inside of me that's why now I am a dolphin and I enjoy to be one but soon I hope I'll get more roles in here so all being said I enjoy to be here and uh, probably always we will be here actually and I can tell everyone in here at the stream that this is a special place to be in well, thank you so much for sharing that. But, uh, you know, the feeling is uh, inverted here on our side. We feel like we're really privileged to work with such a talented community that, uh, you know, does so much to push the space forward. So we just kind of help corral it and shepherd that. And in that vein, would love for you to tell us about your project that you uh, wanted to present that you're working on, c Teroid Punks. Is it, am I saying that correct? Yeah, 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 you're saying, right? Okay, let's see about story punks. So what can I tell? We all love punks, right? So there are the ones we are here, where we are because of them, I guess. I mean, it all started with crypto punks, actually. So our story begins with them. Uh, today, we are not who we really are in this virtual world, let's say in metaverse. We are our avatars. We are our nicknames. By the way, Nightmare, you know I love your avatar. It's 
so cool, so glowy and purple and skull, all of that. I love that. Thank you. <laughs> so as we are, we all love avatars, we thought to uh, recreate punks in our way, in 3D actually, and it's all drawn. It's not a generative project. We want to, to, um, to be unique actually for each holders. Uh, other than this, we didn't want this project to be only visual show. We also wanted more. So uh, I can tell you the story. So we got to imagine that it's 2021. Let's say it's September. Many PFP projects are in our lives. Cats, dogs, schools, apes, camels. They are all cool, right? So out of nowhere, this C virus thing show up into our lives and start to kill all PFPs. I mean, all of them. One by one, all avatars disappeared from our world. All people were in shock and panic. So we couldn't do anything pre to prevent this incident. No PFP could survive this epidemic, but steroid punks. They are the survivors. They are immune to C this C virus. But uh, not all the punks, by the way. Only 2021 of them left in this world. Only them. And these punks also are different from each other. You may see in our roadmap, as this is a story and we love roadmaps, uh, out of these 2021, 1020 are the first generation and the rest are the second generation. This second generation are still alive with the help of this mysterious, let's say, mysterious portions. You may see them on the roadmap. There are three of them, green, yellow, and red. And their background and their glowing eyes came from this portion, actually. They are cool, I guess, it seems to me. And, of course, sea virus. Uh, this sea virus in our roadmap, too, it's going to be... 99 different C virus in our lives, all different from each other, actually, unique. So this story actually will continue as soon as we sold out. There's going to be a second phase, Genesis program. And now it's not the time, and I can't give you any info about that, but I can tell you that we it's going to be a kick-ass story and visual show there. And... Not over. We already know what to do at phase three. As far as I can tell you right now, we'll include the community there and not us, but they will decide the fate of the steroid punks there. By the way, when we're talking about all of this, uh, this second and third phase, we think in a long term, uh, one to two years maybe. So we are very excited, actually, and ready to get into it with the community. And hopefully it will be good for all of us wow that's that's really cool i love the uh 28 days later the whole zombie you know has um taken over uh the avatars and there's only some survivors where are we right now like what stage are we at in this process are you very early in this project actually we started let's say in a let's say we started like a month ago but we, we didn't want to finish the whole collection and put it on the market like the other projects. Actually, we want to keep the excitement fresh for the community. We want to be a ongoing project, let's say. Each Sunday, we have a new drop, like 50 or 100. So no one will know which punk will survive, actually. So it's exciting. So there is a surprise effect for everyone. So we are like at the, st at the first phase. And we think that we will be finished in four or five months. Then we're going to go to the second phase, hopefully. Wow. So you, so not only is it um, which ones are going to survive, but if I understand this correctly, you talked about it being kind of uh, an amalgamation of all different profile pick projects so like i hear i see here like a disto punk right like um you mentioned camels and apes so there could be all kinds of survivors that we haven't seen yet uh maybe i can give you that info maybe it's gonna be at the second phase not at uh -oh. the first phase. the first phase uh -oh. based on the creep punks actually not creep okay punks, but citerate punks let's say Okay. All right. So um, this is continuing to evolve, but even just the artwork itself, we've seen some comments already from the community that, you know, this is pretty dope. Um, are you drawing these yourself or do you have a team that you're working with? 
Actually, we I have a team, and I want to see it at the community right now. No, he's not there. there. There is we are a team of two actually, and we are recruiting. Like uh, we have a Discord channel. We want to get a community manager. Then we have this tech guy about the smart contracts. Uh, my friend, my partner, let's say, he's drawing all of this, and I am the marketing guy, let's say, as a de my, my daily and night job. Okay, and it also sounds like you're the passion and uh, idea guy as well. Some of these are yeah. cool. I'm, I'm kind of like, maybe I shouldn't show these to everyone until after I can scoop the ones that I need, quite honestly. Um, so you're very early. Every Sunday, there's new ones that drop. How has the reception been so far when you've shared this? Actually, let's, like I said, it's been a month that we started. Uh, we got more than 10 holders. And we didn't even advertise this project. Uh, we didn't even shield. But this is, the, let's say, the first advertisement that we are doing right now. So feedbacks are great. And from you also, thank you very much. Uh, people love the story. People love the uh, drawing. As I mentioned, it's all hand draw, not a generative uh, project. Uh, so I guess it's going to be great for all, all of us. What inspired you to go down this route? And like, first of all, I love the idea of which ones will survive and you don't know. And it's kind of uh, revealed each Sunday. So from what inspired you both from focusing yeah. on the profile picks and then also what inspired you for the story? Actually, what inspired me for this story, I wanted to make a story, to tell a story other than doing a, just an avatar project. So I love punks. I don't have any crypto punks, but I wish I had one, but I don't have a, any punks. But, you know, uh, we all know, we all see uh, many projects about the punks. We actually wanted to recreate it, but in our way. So uh, I think about a story, let's say at night with a, my friends. So it's evolved and evolved and came to here. Actually, this story will not end here. So it's as it's an ongoing project. So there's going to be the past, the present and the future. So we are working on a new video, actually, a new trailer. Uh, it's going to be on, let's say, in a two or three weeks. So. We are very excited to air that new trailer. That's very cool. Um, would you mind if I show the trailer that you have up now for the yeah, group? Yeah, yeah. I, 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 I will be happy to. Also need to ask you about the big night for NFTs at Christie's because that's um and it was just like love at first sight, right? And yeah, the first one I bought, I like looked at them all and I was like, okay, it's early. A thousand were made back in twenty seventeen and originally handed out for free. Now some of these things are trading upwards of two million dollars. Hundreds advertising drive the growth of Facebook and Google for subscriptions drive the growth of Netflix and Spotify. The, for the first time in a long time, we have an entirely new native internet business model. Doctors call this disease a C virus. State of emergency declared. Going out prohibited after midnight. There is panic everywhere.
That was epic. <laughs> that, you, that was epic. I uh, love the passion and love the creativity behind it. Um, yeah, super cool thank stuff. You, Mike, Mike. Thank you. So tell me a little bit. So I, I, I'm not sure I understand the, the potion aspect, right? So it looks like the potion changes. Is that relative to the eye color or does it give different features? Because right now you've just exceeded this, right? Because you're at, I think at 311. Yeah, oh, but that, that's not that. Maybe that's not the number of sales, right? That's items that are minted. Yeah, yeah, this the items okay. minted. So we are not at this stage right now. So this portion will be minted like nine hundred ninety nine. So each portion will be three hundred and thirty three. So actually, we're gonna mint them for a dollar. So so there's gonna be nine hundred ninety nine. Uh, portions and 99 lucky portion holder will get second generation pack for free so it's gonna be like a, a giveaway let's say very cool and do the potions do anything functionally do they change the uh, the punk that they may have or it's just you have a better chance of survival as the virus evolves Actually, if you get if that punk uh, survive because of the tank to the green portion, its background and its its glo uh, glowy eyes will be green. So it's gonna be that properties actually for now. Oh, okay, very cool. So literally, it can change uh, what yes. you have. And yeah. um, are there gonna be catastrophic events that affect the? The punks, meaning if someone doesn't get a potion, <laughs> it can something happen. There's so much cool stuff that could happen with this. I feel like I want to. I want to play with it now. Actually, we're thinking about it. You're gonna see in this at the second trailer. You're gonna be you see some tragedy. Let's say. All right. Well, very cool. Um, any anything else we should know about? I may have uh, got too geeked up and hyped up on on what we were talking about and commandeered the conversation. Anything else you want to let everyone know about this project and how they can get involved? Actually, we talk about it the whole thing for now for the phase one. Uh, so we're gonna be here uh, at the well community. So I'm gonna give more info. Let's say at the shield se se section. So uh, actually, thanks again, Nightmare, for having me today. It was great to be here with you and the whale community. Thanks. Uh, and I'll see you guys on the chat, I guess. Thank yeah, no, thank, thank you so much for joining us. This is very cool. I love to see your creativity and your passion come to life. If people want to check it out, it's C Teroid Punks. You can go to cteroidpunks.com. Also, the Twitter is C underscore Teroid Punks. Um, also, you can always just DM Simple Pixel Life. He's very active on our Discord, and I'm sure he'd be glad to talk to you about ideas and cool stuff that could happen with this. I'm excited to see how this evolves because it's uh, it's right up my alley with the way it's gamified and the cool things that it represents. Again, Simple, thank you so much for joining us today. It's been a pleasure. Thanks, you. It was a pleasure for me, too. I'll see you soon. See ya. Bye. Very cool. Penguin, how are you doing? I'm doing amazing. Thanks for having me, Nightmare. Next Thanks up, we have you. Penguin, who's active as well, very active on our Discord, and his project, Never Touch Fiat Again. Penguin, could you tell us a little bit about yourself and you know what you do and, and your background? Sure. So I wear a lot of hats in Web3. Uh, specifically, I was a developer for about 10 years. So now I lead a lot of projects in the DAO space, NFT space, and DeFi space. Um, so lately I've been uh, organizing collectives of artists and, and tech people to uh, hit important projects in the space and uh, bring utility to NFTs. A man of many hats, involved with many projects, I would assume. Yeah, a lot of projects. Uh, yeah, Metafactory, I'm a core member there. So I'm a diamond founder at Metagame. I'm uh, building an NFT platform called Dropper. Uh, I'm helping out with Metaverse Music Festival. Uh, I'm, I do a lot of different things. Uh, Very yeah. Very, very interesting, uh, especially I have some folks from the Metaverse Music Festival that will be popping on at the end to talk about that as well. So maybe you'll just have to pop back into the chat if you don't have something going on. But uh, you mentioned DAO specifically, and I know that this project is relative to finance. Do you have a finance background as well? 
So I have an MBA, so I, I did get uh, a master's in business, but uh, my undergraduate was in computer science. Ah, the perfect amalgamation there, right? I had an undergrad in computer science as well and eventually went into uh, business and marketing. And uh, kudos to you for going through and finishing the MBA because at some point I said, man, uh, is this really worth the effort for me? And uh, so have uh, a few courses to go if I wanted to finalize that, I suppose. Um, but fortunately in my career, it doesn't seem to be necessary, right? I've already punched right. through the glass ceilings required. Um, so don't need to check that box off, but it's only a course or two away should I need it. So thanks for giving us context on that. Can you touch a little bit on your experience with Whale? Yeah, so I've been with Whale since before the token launched and uh, I've been an avid NFT collector um, since you know early 2019. And so I, I got a few punks. I've got a few pretty much of everything. Hagatow. I've been uh, really engaged in the community and was a, a DAO voter and Senate uh, member for a while. Uh, we recently had three back-to-back -back votes that came while I was on a trip to Prague uh, talking about NTFA. So I, I missed those. But uh, yeah, I've been a huge supporter of Whale. And uh, I used to come to the poker. Uh, every every morning and every Tuesday on the weekend, and uh, being on the West Coast, it was at like 6 a.m. my time. So, part of my early NFT grind was, was all about uh, participating in Whale community, and you know, I love you guys. So, I made a lot of friends here and met a lot of great projects. Yeah, that's part of why I'm really enjoying having this segment is there's so many people that have spent, you know, time in this community, almost like an incubator and have gone on to become major players and doing tremendous things. So it's awesome to see that this can be kind of a concentric point for idea sharing and, you know, um, people getting their start to go on and, and, and you know, really make their mark. Um, so talk to me a little bit about your project. Yeah, so Never Touch Fiat Again really touches on, on something that uh, Simply talked about, is that the PFP projects are dying, and it has to do with the fact that there's not a lot of utility in them. And once kind of the hype or excitement dies over a collection, you know, it kind of leads to the point of, like, who were the people and, like, why are they participating in, in this community. And so one of the things that I wanted to drive with our project was that uh, we really baked uh, a utility and use case into each NFT. So as you can see, each NFT has a specific serial number and like a little gold bar on the picture. So the NFT actually owns gold and uh, it legally enforceable has a contract that says this nft owns gold and specifically this one is the space cowboy so this guy owns 50 grams of gold and the serial number for this bar of gold is 8641 so uh i'm encouraging people to claim the gold and so basically by interacting with our project you know and buying some of the genesis ones you get to stack uh, physical gold bars and uh, yeah, there's actually music that goes on with these two if you want to play that. And uh, yeah, so this uh, specific one was drawn by Marco Zubak. So uh, Malibity is one of the other names that he's known as. So my life is better than yours is uh, what it stands for. And uh, he was an amazing team member, and I'm really thankful for his participation. And uh, so the second one, so this one is for a one ounce gram bar. So if you click it, it'll open up the page. Nice. So you weren't kidding about your participation in uh, the Metaverse Music Fest because these are these are actually impressive. It's better than the music I anticipated. So I'm thinking finance and this will be docile, but no, this really uh, this really talks to our culture as you know crypto native and what we enjoy and like. So very cool.
And you were saying if I click on it, it would open a page as well. Yeah. So let's go. Let's go see the big one. Let's see the. So there's the vector seven seven seven. So I figure no collection would be complete without the Lambo. So this one is actually a Lambo with rocket launchers. A subtle statement. <laughs> awesome. And so the, this isn't exactly a Lambo. This is this is a vector. So the vector is a little known uh, handmade version of a Lambo. And when I was a kid, my, my friend had uh, a poster of these and it had like machine guns on the front of it. But uh, I figured for my collection, I had to up it from machine guns and, and add the rocket launchers. So. Yeah, just as an aside, it remind, reminds me of Mask, which was a cartoon <laughs> in the 80s that was pretty cool. These cars could transform and uh, have all kinds of features like that, rocket launchers and whatnot. Um, so talk to me a little bit more about you know, how exactly this works with the redemption for gold, how it's tied together, and, and what this means in a, in a macro sense from a financial sure. perspective. Click the, click the Materium Passport right there for me, if you would, please. Um, uh, okay. Yep. Underneath, yeah, right there. So basically, this is the contract that makes it legally enforceable that says that this NFT owns gold. And Materium is one of our partners, and they are the legal engineers that have helped bring real world assets on chain. Specifically in this instance, it's gold bars. So we can go down and so this pays for carbon offsets. This provides the gold guarantee, the asset identification, and basically tells people everything that they need to know about who I am, why we made this NFT, and the actual guarantee of the gold. So unlike, uh, you know, Unlike having to just trust me that the gold is there, this is an enforceable contract that you can go sue someone that uh, if you don't get your gold, you know, you can get your gold. <laughs> and, and that's uh, kind of without me or anyone. And that's kind of where, you know, the world has to go to is decentralized trust. It's like uh, verification rather than trust. So essentially, the NFT also represents a contract that you have physical... You, you have physical rights to this gold allocation, right? That's and right. so you you could redeem it. Is that what you had said? In fact, I'm encouraging people to redeem it. So I call it like the burning process. So like uh, I did a Metafactory drop called the burning mechanics. And uh, the burning mechanic of the NFT, so let's go back to the website. Sorry. And let's uh, go back one more page. To go, scroll down and click, do the click to win button by the by the buildings. Yeah, to scroll down too. So that's uh, off the screen a little bit, but essentially, right now the NFT has the gold inside of it, and whoever owns the NFT essentially can separate the gold from the NFT. And once they do that, I uh, evolve the NFT. Since the NFT no longer is backed by a real-world asset, we essentially uh, burn it. So we change the metadata, we upgrade some of the stats, and then I also give people another NFT. So we had our first uh, buyer uh, take custody of the gold, and they're arranging delivery now. So that's the main redemption phase and how that works. Do you have any questions on that? I have a bunch. And uh, this is this is because, you know, in layman terms, I may not um, understand this to the same degree that you do. But, you know, a lot of the discussion around crypto natives is that it's Bitcoin could represent the antithesis of gold. It doesn't require physical custodianship um it has some advantages over it and so it almost seems like the marriage of this i'd like to understand your thought process on why you would like to merge these together i'm sure from a macro perspective there's something um bigger that it represents and love to hear your take on that yeah so one of the key things about crypto and one of the big adoption things that we have is people want to say well what's the real world implication of these actions or even this nft that you have and 
for something like uh, commercial rights, it's something that's very important to us, but it's not something tangible. But something like gold has the power to, to really connect people with NFTs and back value and in a way that things just have not been backed for a long time, including money. So specifically, you know, never touch fiat again is is about not using uh, the dollar to transact and being crypto native first. So a lot of this Bitcoin we've noticed has come over to Ethereum and be, been wrapped because they want to use it. You know, they want to have NFTs, they want to have DeFi, and so there's a lot of application between having a store of value that you can use. And these NFTs are collectibles, but they're collectibles that are also backed. And uh, so I'm, I'm doing another uh, series based on this universe. And so these are kind of like the pre-order pass. And I'm going to give people uh, free mints based on the amount of gold that was in the Genesis items that they have. So uh, I have some people that want to keep their gold in the NFTs. Uh, I have other people that want to claim their gold because uh, of the reward for doing so. So there, there's definitely a lot of different interests that I've seen for people with this avenue. Right. And um, I guess in some ways it helps people make the connection, you know, beyond just uh, the NFTs being representative of artwork and um, value that's given to it by the community. Um, this is a functional, you know, technology that can be used to store data that's immutable and be leveraged in a lot of different ways in industries beyond what we're doing right now. And this kind of helps make that connection for some people, I'm sure. Yeah. So um, tell me how, you know, you have, a, I believe, on OpenSea. And now is this representing the Genesis pieces that you had done? Right. So this is the Genesis 7 right here. Um, and so we sold the vector, which is the largest one. Uh, we sold one of the piggy banksies. Um, we have two more that are open for sale. So we've got a piggy banksy and a space cowboy that are open for sale. And uh, yeah, so those are the, the last two remaining ones that I have um, before I do the next phase. So I've kind of been... Uh, giving out wearables and onboarding people into Web3 and doing others, a whole bunch of other stuff as I prepare for the next phase. So I've been uh, making it fun. And you know my experience with the DAO and the crypto space has been, you know if you make things fun, it, it gets people interested. And so like uh, in that vein, like I, I also make wearables. So I made a set of wearables that I wanted to give out to whale community as well today. So I made uh, a cow a cow pig. <laughs> uh, so I wanted to to give out uh, those. So I've got twenty different cow pigs that I was going to give out to to uh, members today of the whale community. And so this goes to like making things fun. So I've done different exclusive wearables and experiences based on the universe. And so, you know, some of them have had very limited runs. Some of them have been a wider community. Some of them have been exclusive to Metafactory purchases. But uh, I also reward people for taking pictures in them in crypto voxels. So uh, the cow pig in the bottom, bottom right, number 10, is what I made for us today. Awesome. Thank you so much. Before we talk about, you know, the, the process for that, um, What's the is there a connection to never touch fiat again, or is this a separate project altogether for you? So, Defiant Pixel Society is an art collective that I help run and, and founded, but uh, this is just kind of a fun way to give back to people that are engaging with the project and you know, communities that uh, are having me on and and that I've really enjoyed being part of throughout this journey. So, that's the that's the main thing about this, but uh, it's also you know, I'm I'm a big wearables creator, so uh, you know it's fun to give them out that, and for promotion. 
That's awesome. I think tomorrow night we'll see a bunch of people running around with uh, cow pig balloons in the in the music festival. How would you? Is there a specific way that you'd like to do this giveaway, or you? Um, you kinda... So I figure in traditional uh, whale fashion, I was going to do an airdrop for twenty people, and then whichever twenty people clicked it, uh, those would be the ones that would be able to submit their address. All right. Sounds. Sounds good. Take it away, Penguin, if you'd like. I don't, I'm not sure if you'll be able to do it in the stream text. Give it a shot if you'd like. Okay, let's let's see if I I'm. Uh, I know Zoro. Yeah, Zoro keeps a keeps a tight leash on us so that we don't misbehave. But we'll see if it works. Let's see. How do I do twenty people? Twenty. It did not stop at 20. Hmm. How about we... Hmm. I wish I would... I wish I knew exactly how to do 20 people. I don't offhand, which is why uh, my whale balance is always um, coming in kind of rough at the end of the month. We could try it again or come up with something alternative. Once we had a cipher event, I'm sure you're familiar with the uh, the cipher project when they have their freestyles here on whale. And I w got a little carried away. I think I spent like 50 something in tips that day, which I don't want to quantify based on what the price of whale was at the time, but it was a lot. Okay. So yeah, um, you wanted to uh, ask me something while uh, I do this? I'm gonna do 20 random employees. Yeah, no, I just wanted to ask you, you know, you talked about the evolution of Never Touch Fiat again. There was a next stage that was going to happen. Can you tell us what that is? Yeah, so essentially, uh, I partnered with um, a famous artist that I, I'm not sure if I can say the name for uh, yet, but I'm going to be designing... Um, characters and items and vehicles based on the universe of uh, this dystopian future that I created with Never Touched Yet Again. So the actual universe is, is set in a very distant future, but I assume that society collapses very quickly, kind of like idiocracy. And uh, so that's kind of why you need rocket launchers and you know, you got a guy walking around on the streets in a space suit with a whole bunch of gold on him. So I'm definitely planning. Um, so it's going to be a three-stage NFT drop where the NFT drops will also be used to buy more gold. So uh, traits in the set will contain uh, gold bars. So kind of like Avistars, but if you roll one of the legendary traits, you know, it will have a gold bar in it. Wow, that's quite the that's quite the score for getting a rare or a legendary. Yeah, and so that's kind of what I you know what I want to do and kind of help move uh, NFTs towards is, is like a lot of new utility and, and engagement that helps enrich us not just with uh, cool pictures and art and wearables, but we'll we'll literally stack gold bars in our in our your closet if we want to <laughs> that that sounds very cool any you know i know you're you're trying to not reveal anything but any clue as cryptic as possible that you could give us on who the artist would be he has been an og in this space and um has been kind of silent for the last year he's been working really really hard to level up a whole bunch of other artists so this is going to be an opportunity that I have to kind of work with him and his new art studio. So Awesome. I'll, I'll stop you before I make you leak too much, but there's a lot there that uh, people want to sleuth. They could try to dig in. I don't know if the bot's behaving or Zorro, uh, Zorro has us uh, under his thumb here. Did, did it work out for your giveaway? I was thinking an alternative is we could give a phrase for people to say in the chat. 
and uh, or you can work it out after you know after you sign off if you want. It's up to you. Yeah, uh, or I mean, I could take the first uh, twenty people that drop their address or something to me. I guess I don't know. Oh, uh, you know what? I'll let you poke around in the uh, in the stream text and you know do it however you want. Maybe you could gamify that a little bit. But Penguin, thank you so much for coming on and explaining this to me a bit more. I think now it helped me get a good grasp on on what it is. And uh, very cool that you're trying to find those different ways to add utility, finance, gamification, all into the same project to to bridge a lot of these different perspectives and worlds. Thank you. Yeah, I just went to Prague and uh, talked a lot about, more about the project. So I'm looking for uh, the next step. So thank you very much for having me on. Awesome. Well, listen, you'll, you'll have to let us know when phase two is about to happen so we could uh, get everybody on board for that as well. Okay. And All yeah, right. there's two more available from the Genesis set if you want to get the uh, yes. drop for those other, other sets. So you'll get uh, access to those. Awesome. All right, Penguin, thank you so much. You have a great day. Thank you. Bye. Gentlemen. We have Easy in Crypto and My right. World, both gentlemen who, who really have no need for an introduction. Uh, the community, I'm sure, knows you very well. Um, in case they don't, and if you feel obliged, you can feel free to, to let them know a little about, about who you are. You want to go, you want to go first, hey. Easy? Um, Stoked to be here, Easy in Crypto. Uh, I think most people probably here uh, know me by Easy. I've uh, been hanging with the Whale fam since Maiden Voyage, and uh, you know, lucky enough to know uh, Whale Shark from even a little bit before that, from the early scent days. Oh, subtle flex, subtle flex there. <laughs> I've got a. Uh, I actually before Whale really uh, can you know became a community when Whale Shark was early posting on scent i was very impressed with you know his his take on things and i remember what first got me into rapping again and kind of launched me into this uh this whole hip-hop uh nft um craze was i did a little rap and i'm trying to remember the line about whale shark it was like um whale shark dropping knowledge and organizing he holds mad art and you see the horizon Look into the future is what we all need to support another artist is a noble ass deed. And that was my whale shark shout out from the uh, Little Scent Diddy rap right there. That's like, that's years old. So yeah, it is, it's fun to look back on, on those early days and then to see where the community is now, just incredible. Yeah, um, man rapping for whale shark back in the day I, I i would be lying to you if i if i uh didn't tell you that i had a little whale rap of my own i may have to pop it onto uh the cypher project and mint it right that could be my debut someone oh, hears of me yeah it is definitely whale themed though but uh funny story i think you'd appreciate this they're they're cutting down a gargantuan tree right outside my house when i say outside my house i mean like where my office is this tree is five or six feet from the wall so there's yeah. chainsaws there's crane trucks going crazy so i i had to start this and run this um segment old school in my bedroom hip-hop style i have the comforter <laughs> over my head with the microphone in front of me and over the computer so hopefully it doesn't sound nice. too muffled nah your comforter is uh excellent at dampening that that chainsaw sound it's it's all good very nice Love it. Sometimes, you know, we just got to roll with uh, what the world throws at us. And, yeah, uh, definitely. That's, that's one of the amazing things about, you know, this community is able to adapt uh, really quick on the fly. Yeah. And uh, my world. Hello, hello. What is that? Hey, thanks for taking a few minutes to join us today. I know you are super busy with what you guys got going on. Um, I know a lot of the community had seen you from all of your different endeavors on Token Smart, as well as your own music and our interview that we had, which uh, was amazing, by the way. Hopefully, we get that part two because we left a lot on the table. But uh, anyone that didn't see it, could you just give a quick synopsis on yourself? Uh, yeah, sure. Um basically uh just your average guy um uh make uh i'm a musician producer um 
artist and uh yeah just infatuated with the with the web three and uh all the tools that are here um just experimenting and coming up with new things to kind of try out and see what works and uh it's just yeah it's a it's super inspiring and exciting to be here this early um but yes it has been a very very busy month let alone the last like three days has just been straight chaos but um thanks to the squad that we have kind of um inspired along the way everybody is really just like making it happen um of course a little bit uh mishaps here and there oh yeah we look at that we passed uh, a thousand followers look good for us nice milestones that's what we do here at whale on whale fm um Have yeah it. so so thank you guys so much for taking time out of your busy schedules to join us and tell us a little bit about this metaverse music fest that's about to be happening this weekend i uh you know i've been in some discussions with you guys as well as some others um told the community that it's happening but obviously you guys are in the trenches building it you have alpha on all the super exciting stuff going on so we'd love to hear you just kind of explain what it's all about and what's going to be happening yeah um i don't know if uh easy you want to hop in i'll just do a brief overview of the of kind of like where where it started like what inspired it and then uh, i'll let i'll let you kind of run in on it uh easy but so it all started um you know like as you said you know we, we do a lot of stuff in this space just from podcasts to collaborating on music um you know trying to innovate on you know certain projects whatever it is and one day we were in a uh, Mighty My Show chat, which is just a podcast where we talk about music um, and all of this. And so, you know, just mid conversation, someone brought up, uh, you know, doing a music festival and we were just sitting there talking. And for some reason, it just dawned on me. I was like, yeah, this would be perfect for us to do. You know, we have the network, we have the community, we just need to organize and kind of just do the work. Um, so we definitely... Um, so it was uh oh you said you said you can't hear me am, am i good no i think you're good i think easy's just working through his uh his, what, his what he's yeah yeah what he's got going on right right uh so shout out easy always got a always always has the robot voice at least one time during a during the long time. i mean the guy the guy the guy chimes in from around the world right he's in costa Facts. rica or whatever he's on yeah. the he's like i'm on the highway I'm, my tires getting changed like he's yeah, he's definitely a trooper <laughs> His phone doesn't know. I, uh, I, I'm yeah. sorry, guys. I can't hear my, so I just have to assume that he's given you guys some really great uh, details on the MVMF. Yeah, you know it's what? It's going to uh, be incredible. Can you hear me still easy? Yeah, yeah, I can hear you. Okay, so you know what? I'll just uh, I'll, I'll tag you in. It'll be like wrestling, right? I'll be like, you're, you're tagged in easy. Word. Yeah. All right. So, yeah, I... I actually haven't even really got to the festival yet, but, uh, but basically we, you know, it dawned on so good. We, we can do this. So we went ahead and, uh, created a form just to round up some crew members within the token smart discord, which is where we were having the podcast. And, you know, by the next day we had like 15 people that were interested in helping started a discord, just me and mighty, and then just started inviting people. And from there, people just started running with it um you know there was no doubt that this uh was completely just uh it just inspired everybody to really just pick up a shovel and start doing something and so it really uh just grew and spread and turned into something um which is happening it kicks off tonight actually but um i'll, I'll let easy expand a little more but you know the event has everything from musical performances to uh giveaways wearable giveaways wearable treasure hunts that are going to last throughout the the whole three-day event um which by the way it is a three-day event starting tonight it's kind of like a four-day event but like three-day basically um uh nft auctions um exclusive drops uh art galleries a fashion show um interviews panels it's going to be a lot of stuff uh, all mashed into one mega festival. And the whole point of the festival to us was just to showcase the Web3 world, showcase everything that was being built, but at the same time, introduce new artists to the metaverse and the potential of the metaverse. Like, what what can you do here? You know, when I first got introduced to the metaverse, my mind kind of expanded very quickly. I was like, wow, people take this seriously and people do this? Like, imagine what you can build that people will experience. That's, I think, the most exciting part about Web3 as a whole. 
And I think that's just the thing that we're trying to tap into is just inspire people to realize how far you can go um, with your creativity now. Like I think in the future, we're going to see um, a lot of uh, artists that are more than just one thing. They do all kinds of things, uh, just creating experiences for people. Um, and I think that's really all an artist really does anyways, is just creates an experience. But um, yeah, so that's kind of like the overview of the event. Um, there are, uh, there's higher tier packages as well that come with um, extra exclusive wearables that are uh, partnered with, we partnered with Hash Masks um, and their dev team to help make us these tickets from the visuals to the uh, exclusive um, way that these tickets work. Um, the tickets work pretty uniquely. Um, I'll briefly explain. It's just, if you have these certain tickets, any event you go to, any stage you go to, you'll be able to get the autograph of the artist performing there and that'll brand your ticket. And as you keep going to different events, it'll uh, at different stages and different shows throughout it, uh, or maybe you complete a treasure hunt or whatever, all of it will go. Um, uh, I totally lost train. I got a message. Totally lost train of my thought. No, you were saying how people can go to the events and they get their ticket autographed and branded and it evolves. Yes, exactly. So in this ticket, this feature is only with the higher tier tickets. Um, but the free, there is a free, uh, like it's basically like a follow up, but it is like a free ticket tier that, uh, will allow you to do all kinds of other things as well. But, uh, yes, the, the autograph that will brand and will expand over time. It'll grow and evolve with how you experience it. And so at the end of the festival, uh, everyone's ticket will be unique. Um, you know, some people's tickets might be the same, but, uh, that's another little thing that's going on with it, as well as not to mention the utility of the tickets long term. Um, we don't want to say too much, but let's just say that, you know, they're certainly worth the investment. I, I mean, we would say we signed on uh, with our first partners, uh, the dev team, and they're going to be with us for at least the next two two festivals after this. And so that's uh, it's just guaranteeing that the next festival will only be better. Um so yeah, that, that's a yeah. I'll I'll stop ranting. Let Easy kind of jump in. I don't know if he can hear me at all, but um, he uh, he can't. I, but I'll, I'll I I can. I, it sounds like a chipmunk. I hear a lot oh. of ch little chirpity chirps. Ah. I know you were talking. Yeah, he was he was highlighting how it came together and you know why it's unique in that you know it's letting people know the possibilities of web3 and a lot of people have gotten excited about it and they're just highlighting some of the diversity of types of events that could take place and then we just touch base on the tickets and how that's unique when you go um, event to event and it gets uh branded um with signatures and can evolve and you could have unique ones nice, nice. yeah some really, some really interesting, interesting things happening with the ticketing of course it's free for anybody to come into the metaverse uh and hang out but if you want to support mdmf a little deeper you can get the different ticket tiers wearables future airdrops the signature po things uh it's just amazing because we have like musicians poets magicians dancers like light shows <clears throat> it's just across the board and i know that my probably hit on this but it's a great kind of pinnacle of opening the door up to the wider community i think that through anybody being able to just watch the twitch stream for example may bring people some awareness of the metaverse that haven't, that haven't been, been there, before. there before you know maybe one of their favorite bands is going to play and they'll be able to at least watch hopefully that gets them to click a link and hop into one you know crypto voxels or decentraland uh, i really do think we're at a pivotal point where uh, music and and many more of the arts are going to get a lot more attention. Um, I know that the visual arts really kind of kicked all this off, and then the PP, PFP craze and music is getting more focus. A lot of people are coming in, but I think just the timing of this is phenomenal. Being this weekend and then going straight into NFT NYC, and again just. The team, the crew working on this for the past about four months has just blown my mind. I think Mighty had mentioned the other day in the Mighty Mice show how even 
before it's really happened, there have been waves through the whole kind of space just because of the planning and organization and the, the connections and relationships being built. So even pre-show, it's had a large impact. And I think after the show, it's really going to make some waves. I think you make a good point on the timing. I mean, if you look at what's happening with Catalog right now and them really solidifying their place to be the premier um, kind of audio NFT representation of, you know, really uh, high value items and kind of the, the acceptance of that by the greater collector community. I mean, we've seen some huge, huge investments and purchases and people really believing in the value of audio NFTs and how that's kind of coming to the forefront now. So there's been a lot of noise about it for sure, but that wasn't just saber rattling. It's, it's happening. And what I really like about this festival is you quickly saw the amalgamation of support from from all corners of the 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 NFT movement and the greater you know ecosphere. You have Audius catalog. You have Song Camp representatives. You have the artists that are mainstays. You have new artists, right, that haven't traditionally done it. You have organizations that you wouldn't say in particular are music focus, but they understand this is, this is significant and we want to be a part of it. And it looks like this could be, you know, a, a big event that's anniversary from here on out. So, you know, to be able to go to the inaugural one is a big deal. Absolutely. We have been talking about, uh, again, sort of touch on ticketing, this being the first, you know, Genesis MVMF, uh, it's going to be really interesting, you know, a year or two from now after we have a few under our belt and each one will be, I'm sure, you know, better and better. Uh, this will be the only first. So as Maya said, it'll be the second best thing you do all weekend guaranteed. So come on through. If you want to grab a ticket, there's even the free tier. I think it's going to be worth just, you know, having some of the goodies from this. You can go in. There'll be some treasure hunts and just a lot of fun. And you're right about the support. Coming from across such a wide spectrum, from artists to whole communities to, you know, shout out Dow House. Literally, this was coming together so fast and we were starting to get kind of, you know, bigger attention. And we realized we're going to need a Dow. So, uh, you know. So shout out to Musashi who helped really whip together that. And so now, you know, after the festival, we'll be then putting some focus on the DAO and how that gets structured and built out. And so that in the future, MVMF um, assets, whether that's maybe, you know, we get some land in a couple different metaverses, that will be able to be put to use for the community through the DAO so that people without virtual land access, because that value has become very high, will have a place to come in and, you know, do shows. And I do think that the MVMF will be a big, you know, annual event. And uh, yeah, it's a, it's a lot more than just that, though. Yeah, it sounds like the jumping off point for a lot of uh, a lot of big things to happen. A couple quick questions while I got you guys, because I know you guys are busy. You keep we keep mentioning these um, tickets that people could possibly uh, you know get to support the project and the festival. Where can people purchase those? So uh, those will be, I believe, purchasable up on. Open sea. There, there has been work going on over the last 24 hours trying to get everything dialed in for the metadata and minting. And I know there was a few little hiccups. And so I'm actually not sure if it's going to be something you can mint through the website or you just go buy on Open sea. There was a couple options there. Mine. Yeah. Yeah. So, so yeah, this is definitely something that is going to be like last minute. Uh, definitely going to be a situation if it doesn't come out in time. But, but uh, they are – Mighty's last message to me was positive. They are trying to get this website up and running. Um, but, yeah, it'll be – we're going to have our own website where you're going to be able to do this. And uh, let me try and see if I can have the actual link. And then if not, though, you will be able to go straight to OpenSea and um, 
Any, yeah. Yeah. Any open set is that? But let me. See okay. That. So, so, so I'm just making sure I'm not crazy because I'm like, okay, let me try to check this out and wasn't able to find it. I'm sure, there may be some other people that do want to support as well. So, when you guys do have the link and totally understand, uh, it's still being shored up, right? Um, things move fast and furious here, especially with so many moving pieces for something like this. When you do have the link, please shoot it over to me and I'll share it with the community so that we can make sure that everyone that wants to participate can. That's awesome. And, and we will definitely be giving all the news through the MVMF Presents on Twitter. So right. if you are following that, you're going to see all the announcements when tickets are live for purchase, you know, kind of what's going on and what space is throughout the, uh, uh, throughout the event. A quick question. Um, you know, you talked about the diversity of uh, – things that people could do whether it's there's going to be a light show you think you mentioned a magician there's going to be panels can you just touch on a few of those so people can get a flavor of what they could possibly do this weekend and participate as well as if there's any particular get you know features we want to highlight i know there may be people that don't traditionally um you know do stuff in the metaverse that may be coming through as well there are a few kind of, I think, special acts um, that normally you might not catch in the metaverse. And maybe I'll leave for my to cover some of the panels, which are going to be really cool, too. And maybe some of those big guests. I'm honestly super excited for the magic show, which you did mention. And so uh, I'll spill the beans here. Uh, Jason from over at Bitlectro is like a magician. He's like, you know, done magic shows and toured and done that stuff. And so when I found that out, I was like, dude, we need magic at the MVMF. And so he's re he's recorded a few little acts and then a larger like 10 15 minute one so we'll have this magic show that'll go up maybe even like once a day or something and we'll have these short snippets to be able to throw on when we need to buy a few minutes of entertainment you know to like fix something on the back end we'll be like hey watch this little magic show so that's just one thing that i'm super excited about of course you know the cypher is going to be super fun um, it's just very exciting to be seeing a lot of different content from, you know, like, like opera singers, I know, to people, you know, reading their NFT book segments or poetry. Um, the, the hunts are always super fun. And then, yeah, there's, there's a big name that's coming in that I don't know if it's been put out yet. I'm going to pass it to Mai for this. <laughs> okay. Did you wait? Are you asking me to confirm or deny? You don't have to do anything, but uh, any, you know, any flavor you could give to what people could be expecting and what they could experience if they come through. Um, well, yeah, I think the number one thing that you can expect is if you go to this event and you're there for any given solid amount of time, you will definitely leave most likely with more value than you came with. This is kind of the idea of the event. Um, at least this was like I think one of the moral basis of it is that we want we want this event to, to carry more uh, memorandums and, and digital assets and digital memories uh, for, you know, as sad as that might sound, um, you know, to take with them um, furthermore, whether that's uh, wearables that they won or earned through treasure hunts. I personally, one of my biggest things that I'm hyped about is the implementation of treasure hunts and giveaways. I think that's kind of the most fun part about this is a lot of people kind of band together and said, we're going to give away some stuff, including myself. Um, so, and I hit, Hey, like, I don't want to plug that at all, but I'll just say like what I'm giving away, I think is pretty dope too, but um, don't want to say too much about that. But the guest that I think uh, easy is referring to is uh, somebody that everybody probably knows uh, on some level. Uh, I don't think it's going to be too much of a mind blower, but It'll be pretty interesting. We we don't want to. I don't want to say his name just yet. Um, but um, it, it could be sick. It, it, there's been a little bit of back and forth, and I think we've figured it out. But you know how that goes. So we're just trying not to say anything too early. Um, well, we'll just uh, we'll see the headlines that turn that turn heads and uh, get into the news cycle after it happens. I'm sure. Absolutely, and that, that would be that'd be dope to you know have a follow up maybe in like a, two weeks or something. I, I know that we talked about uh, getting on for one as well. So maybe we can, 
Well, I don't know if we're going to combine them, but yeah, well, yeah, hundred percent. Yeah, it'll be interesting to see how it turns out. The, the, um, the experience is uh, is going to be more worth it than anything. Just knowing what works, what doesn't, what do people really like, what are people excited about that they experienced when they were there, um, all of that. So right. So we'll see. And then, um, much like the 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 ticketing, I assume there's you know that schedule is a moving a moving target also, but that'll be published soon prior to the event, so people can see you know the particular event they want to go to, where what location it's at, and when they can hop in. Um, sorry, I'm, I'm sorry. Can you say that one more time? My bad. Yeah, no, no, no. I'm just saying the schedule will likely be posted soon as well. That's, I'm sure, a moving target with everything going on. Um, but once it is, people will be able to know where they can hop in to see what act if they want to take part. Absolutely. Yes, it's yeah. a beast. Right, I can imagine. Um, is this going to go across multiple uh, platforms? So, you know, Decentraland, Crypto Voxels, or is it only going to be on one? Across multiple. So, so crypto voxels, Decentraland, and Somnium Space are kind of like the big three. But then there's also things happening in Gather Town <clears throat> with like a crypto arcade. Uh, I believe there's some going on in what is it? OVR, maybe some in spaces. So there are quite a few kind of satellite performances. And then we'll have those main stages in the main metaverses. There's a portal hub in Crypto Voxels. Um, shout out to Bitrees and Savage Preeb. So you'll be able to go and there will be, there should be a schedule basically posted there and you'll be able to, you know, see what's happening, click on a portal, go to that act. From each act, there should be a, a poster that says back to MVMF portal. So from any stage, you can basically click on that and go back to the portal network, hop to the next show. Um, and of course, there'll be this kind of central Twitch stream and the Discord. So there will be multiple ways to get that information. I think the Twitter is going to be great. And then we should have a full lineup up on the website, hopefully very soon. Yes, I have seen um, some iterations of it, and it's a matrix for sure uh, with everything you guys have going and covered. Not unlike, you know, if you go to NFT NYC or whatever, and there's all these really cool satellite events, and you kind of get to pick and choose which one you want to take part in. Um, so everybody knows that's watching from Whale. I will be actually hopping in tomorrow evening for a special edition of Blockchain Beats. So I will be heading to some of these locations and checking out what's going on. You can come along with me watching the stream, but I will have a giveaway put together for people that actually join me physically or metaphysically in the metaverse uh, at specific locations. So still working out exactly how that'll work. Maybe I'll have a guest book that you sign, or maybe I'll have you take a snapshot picture of your avatar at the location, but we want people to come in and experience this music festival and show them support from our community and all the great things that's happening in audio NFTs. So really looking forward to that and sharing that experience with everybody tomorrow. Oh, yeah. So appreciate you inviting us on. And that's huge because we do want to drive people in world as much as we can um, and spread some of the excitement and education to new people. I know a lot of the people here in Whale are like diehards. They're going to be jumping in. I'll try and find you to cruise around a little bit. Love that you're bringing them in, doing a giveaway that gets people super excited. So just thanks so much. Yeah, just full disclosure, uh, I'm naked except for a pair of glasses and some paint. So not trying to offend anybody, but, oh, you know, I'm working with what I got work, to work with. We can work on that. Hit, hit, we'll talk in DMs. I think we're going to get set up with some wearables. Easy. You're, uh, you, you just arrived in New York, and you have the time to uh, talk to me about my outfit in the metaverse. So you are you are an absolute machine, my friend. Much love. All right, guys, it's been a pleasure. We look forward to seeing everything that you uh, bring forward when we are in the main. Oh, hold on. Penguin looked like he wanted to pop in again. Penguin. Hey, I have I have one other thing about the Metaverse Music Festival, too. Sure. Um, so I kind of arranged a Metafactory drop for the festival as well. So we'll have a live voxel teas uh, available for Metafactory for the, the festival, too. Amazing.
Shout out to Meta Factory and Penguin for making that shit happen. That is uh that is another yeah. Once again, just something that what I love about the festival is that you know you're gonna be able to go to this and you're gonna be able to leave with more value, hopefully than than you came with. And we're trying to basically set the precedent for metaverse festivals for other um you know uh, platforms that that throw them. Um, but yeah, I mean they don't have as good of a name as we do though. Um, it sounds like there's a lot of swag. So it sounds like you, you don't want to miss this because you'll be kicking yourself if you do. So thank you guys for all the alpha. Definitely appreciate it. And looking forward to seeing you guys at the festival over the coming days. Thank you. Really appreciate awesome. It. Thank you. Well, fam strong. Reth, how are you? Hello, Reth. Hello, can you hear me now? I can. It looks like a little a little bit of static, but I can hear you. Cool. Uh hi guys. Hey, well, uh, sorry, I, I don't know if there was a bit of a time mix up there or you thought we were in voice chat, but we were going live. So that's even a, a, a more immersive experience for everybody to see what you wanted to present. So um, glad you could still make it here with us. Cool. So um, a little bit my, about myself. Uh, I go by Ref. I uh, found the whale community two, three months ago by accident. And I've been here ever since, just kind of hopping in, seeing what's going on. And uh, recently I was reached out uh, by, I believe, Nightmare for a uh, community um, spotlight. So I, I wanted to share a little project I found a while ago. Uh, the project is called Party Bones. I don't know if I can share any links, but uh, you guys can definitely find Party Bones on OpenSea. Uh, the whole concept of the project is to build or mint individual bones, uh, one, for e one for each uh, bone in the body. And the idea is to merge them all and mint them until you have a full structure. Um, I do have a couple of links here that would show uh, what has been minted so far. I don't know if that's something you can share. Um, I don't. I don't know if you can see right now, Reth, but I actually do have some of um, the Party Bones assets up. So we have the Twitter, we have the main website, we have the Party Bones Open C collection. Uh -huh. And like and likewise, we have the merge page. Yeah, so um, when you mint a bone, uh, the bone will go into your wallet, of course, and you can connect it to one of these uh, merge sites. And what will happen is it will populate in with all the bones you own. And if you have all the correct bones, you can merge them together. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and post this. So this is a different link on OpenSea. It does show a couple of structures of already merged together bones. So this is uh, something the community has been working on together. We do have, I believe, a fully finished skeleton as well. So it should be on that list somewhere. I believe um, the Party Bones team has recently started talking about uh, fractional ownership, uh, some kind of DAO. I'm not very well informed on that, but you guys could always join the server and ask around to see what kind of plans they've got for that. So yeah, here you see the fully merged Party Bone. Very cool. So if I can backtrack a little bit, how did you become part of the, the team moderating the Party Bones um, project? Were you just oh, active right. in that community or? Yeah, I was uh, pretty active since day one. The concept of just, you know, kind of like Lego pieces, 
putting everything together was just really, really, uh, I really love the idea. So I've just been there since the server start. I watched them launch, continue to just con put out content for the party bones. Uh, it, it actually started with a, a party skull mint, a free party skull mint that was supposed to give us access to minting the bones. And uh, I actually still have one of those. That's uh, one of my pr profile pictures on the bone server. Uh, so it's called Party Skulls. Anyways, uh, so I, I just stuck around, watched the growth, uh, did a lot of my own promotion for the project. And eventually I, I, uh, they took me onto the team because I, I guess I was a more integral part of the community. I've been a little bit busy lately, though. So uh, lately it's just been uh, trying to put in a little bit of time here for all the projects I enjoy. And uh, Party Bones has been one of the ones I've been in since uh, I first introduced to the NFT space. Very cool stuff. And it's always cool to see people that, uh, you know, find something that they're passionate about or really enjoy and then become um, a bigger part and, and able to, you know, really leverage that passion to do something that they think is cool. Um, so tell me, is it is it really just about collecting and then seeing what kind of cool uh, collective skeleton that you can make with these different textures of each of the bones? Or, or is there is there something else to it as well once they're merged? Well, um, as far as I know, there's supposed to be 50 different sets of bones. Uh, oh, wow. So uh, one of my favorite colors is um, the iridescent color. I do have one of those bones, but uh, it does require 206 to merge a full skeleton. So it, it's a, it's a long-term project. Uh, I currently have like maybe four or five bones myself. I'm not really able to merge yet, but... That's something I look forward to be able to do in the future. As for um, the merging process itself, like I said, um, it's more of a community effort at this point. Everyone kind of just, they build their own uh, parts together if they can. If not, they donate it to the community building process. And this is how we've gotten so far. Very cool. It's almost it almost reminds me of like a, a collective community kind of puzzle group, right? Like these pieces are intricate. There's a lot of small individual segments. And um, by working together and finding a way to have that teamwork, you can kind of piece together these larger structures with the goal, obviously, being a skeleton. Um, but each of them will be unique, right? Like what are the odds that all of the bones would be of the same texture and color and whatnot? So um, each one will represent a very unique labor of love from these people within the community. Yeah, exactly. Um, in terms of ownership lately, like I said, they've talked about fractional ownership and even starting a DAO. And uh, like I said, I'm, I'm still really new to this whole area, so I'm not sure what those terms are or what they entail, but you could definitely talk to some of the uh, other owners of the project. They're much more uh, informed on the whole process. Well, that's very cool. What... um. How would you describe the community? Is it growing? Is it, you know, is it uh, a lot of teamwork? Uh, is there a lot of discussion in there? Are people really honed in and focused on finding the right pieces? Um, right now, we're still in a growing process, I guess. Uh, there are quite a few invested people in this project. And as you can see, they've put together quite a few pieces themselves. Uh, I believe right now, uh, me and my partner, uh, you might have heard of them uh luna beam uh that she is a massage therapist and recently has started making use of the couple of bones that we have put together kind of as like a model for their class so we're kind of just expanding out in every direction at the moment very cool. I just saw this uh, this retweet by Ja Rule, who's been you know popping up at some various projects and showing his interest. So cool to see that retweet and uh, calling out you guys as dope. And then also very cool to hear that you know you're having some use case for them, right? Like you're using this in um, an actual medical or medicinal 
you know, uh, environment where it could give some um, perspective to people trying to understand how things come together. Yeah, because, uh, you know, uh, it's it's hard to carry around a full-size skeleton. So, right. Uh, you know, just having an NFT and being able to point out specific bones, and it's supposed to be a one-to-one -one, uh, match with that actual human body as well. So there's just a lot to uh, use it for in terms of an educational perspective as well. Yeah, the, the team behind it, is there a medical background or just an interest in anatomy? Um, I think that the team originally just wanted to create a really cool project, and this is kind of what came up. Um, they, they might have one. They haven't really talked about it too much. But yeah... Um, ultimately they, they came out with this project and well um, that's cool i mean it yeah it's cool because it, it could have been their attention to just do something they thought was interesting and then the people that could use it found it and have adapted and adopted it for some different things so uh very cool stuff thank you Reth, so much for coming on and sharing some of your experience and your perspective with party bones no problem thanks to uh thank you for having me yep and with that, folks, we'll wrap our whale community spotlight. It's been awesome seeing some of the stuff you guys are working on. If you have a project of your own or a project that you're working with that you would like to highlight on a future whale community spotlight event, please reach out to either myself or Justin, and we'll be sure to slate you guys in for the next one. Have a great day.